Coming to you from the studios at the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66, it's the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Rock and Roll Chicago! Hey everybody, it's Ray the Roadie. And this is Hollywood Mike. How's everybody doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Uh, You know, this has been a rough week already and it's only Wednesday. (laughs) Is it? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I woke up on Monday morning Mm -hmm. to extreme pain in my face. No joke. Remember the old joke? Yeah. Is your your, your face hurting? (laughs) I kept my mouth shut. I didn't say anything. I went to the dentist and between uh, Monday and this morning, I had two minor surgical procedures in my mouth. Oh, so I'm on a lot of painkillers right now. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad and, you could make it. You know, here's the crazy thing. In my entire life, I've never had any major dental work done ever. Mm-hmm. The only thing I've ever had done was I had my wisdom teeth extracted and I lost a tooth here, but that was because a fastball came in a little too high and tight mm-hmm. when I was about 16 years old. And here I have to have two procedures in one week. So I'm a little loopy. If I forget all your names, yeah, it's you because, have an excuse. Yeah, I don't. Vicodin is my friend. <laughs> you got no. any on, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody's hearing another voice in the background there. Oh, yeah. And tonight we have joining us Libido Funk Circus. We have Desiree Harris and Jeff. <laughs> Just, Jeff. <laughs> Just Jeff. Like, sure. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? Very good. Very good. Glad you can make it out. Thank yeah. you for inviting us. It's it's a uh, it's a be good t- good time. Yeah. So we started having a conversation before we walked into the studio, which was I found very interesting. Your uh, your musical pedigree goes back to when you were a youngster, starting with your parents. Why don't we start with uh, how you got into all, doing all this stuff? Yeah, I I I I grew up kind of from a young age watching my parents play. Um, they, my dad was a drummer. My mom was a singer. Um, Jeff and I kind of live a, a, a very, I guess, I don't know. What, what do you, how do you want to call it? Similar. A, a, a similar life yeah. to my, to my similar parents. Similar story. Similar story. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like parallel lives. Anyhow, my, the, my parents met my, my, my dad and mom were in a band together. Um, and then the, had multiple, multiple bands, varying degrees of success in, in the different bands and, um, different, um, conglomerations. But, you know, once my, once, once the, the beautiful lead singer came into, into the band, my, my dad, you know, kind of put her on lockdown and, <laughs> and <laughs> he was a smart man and he, and he married her. Um, and then they, you know, they, they had a, they had a professional life as musicians for, for a while until, until my dad started to, um, realize he needed to do something more with his life. And he eventually left to go into real estate, but they did have some, um, regional success here on the radio, uh, on the charts with their, with their band rain tree. They had a single called face the autumn that did really well here. Um, and they, you know, they toured around a little bit regionally and, um, I guess that's kind of the story. And then, uh, I joined up with libido when I was, uh, early, gosh, what year was it? 2004, 2004, I think so. Um, and that's how him and I met. And, um, uh, eventually we got married and have been doing, I've been doing this with them for almost 20 years. Yeah. be 19 years. Yeah. 20 yeah. years almost. And, uh, who is the founder of I am you are the founder yeah. of the Beatle Funk Circus and you guys have been around for how many years we started in September of 96 and it was just as a uh just to play a party for friends we were we had never been in like a cover band or anything um myself and Jason the lead singer and the drummer at the time who's still the drummer Dan we were have been in band since we were in high school together and we were basically pursuing the rock and roll dream thing like everybody and uh never thought about doing covers and at the time <clears throat> we had a band that was on a small label you know could go either way you know not a lot of money there but we were about to we could go on a regional tour in this and our other guitar player basically who was married first child came along kind of we were all like brothers so it kind of like we just decided that whatever the path would be would be you know but from that, like a couple of friends of ours, one time we were just talking and we all were, we practiced at this studio called Metropolis with a bunch of other musicians and people. And 
a bunch of girls we knew kind of were like wanting to do, but they were like, you should do like a party and play like seventies music and stuff and fun, you know, and being a bunch of single young boys, we were like, yeah, let's try to be fun. And we were, to be honest, we were, <laughs> I was going down and seeing this band called the Aphrodisiacs a lot at the Cubby Bear back at, at the time. And it was just, I couldn't believe that all these people would show up every week to watch these guys play like the same 15 songs and all these girls were there and it was so much fun. So that's kind of like, we're like, we could do that. So we learned like 10 minutes. Didn't, didn't you call them too to try yeah, to we tried them? to hire them to play a disco themed party at, at the studio because we had a huge sound stage there. It was one of the nicest sound stages in like the, the, uh, the suburbs and stuff. They were, they said how much they cost and I had no idea. I'm in an original band. So I had never heard that you could, I making. I didn't think. And when they came back with the amount of money that they said they needed, I was like, oh man. And we were like, we'll just do it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> and we literally learned 10 songs, got some seventies disco clothes and went through a seventies party. And it was so much fun. Some people asked us to do it again right. and we did. And then I called up a booking agent and I said, I have this thing uh, with these people and we started getting gigs and all of a sudden it kind of became like our side job. And here we are. And they were dumbfounded at yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. with, someone was paying us yeah, to do this. To do we were just right. having a, at the time we didn't take it seriously. It wasn't like a professional business or ran like it that. It was really different back then. Yeah, it was raw. <laughs> it was a bunch of single boys drinking and partying and having a good time and, you know, trying to be rock stars in a cover band thing back then. <laughs> Not, you know, and getting paid like a hundred, 200 bucks and being, oh my gosh, you know? So that was how it started. And then over the time, it just kept growing and growing and it became our vocation for everybody. It became, we, we never stopped playing original music or writing and we've had minimal success with stuff in that, but this enabled us to just not do anything but music our whole lives. Like, right. so myself and my two best friends that I was in high school with have been playing music together since high school and making a living at it. So that's kind of how it all started. So out actually. of there's, there's six of us in the band right now, um, out of the six, three have yeah. been in it the entire mm -hmm. 27 years. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. So that's and our, our, him, our drummer, Dan, and our singer, Jay. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, and that's because, you know, these guys grew up together. Like we learned said, how to play know, together. You yeah, know, it's like, they, I used to pick my drummer up. He didn't have a driver's license and we would sneak, yeah. I'd sneak him out of his house on Wednesday or, or Friday night after he was supposed to be home for curfew. Cause he's like a year and a half younger than us. He'd come home from band practice, you know, and uh, tell his parents he's home, say good night go outside, go down to the basement, walk out the patio back door. I would pick him up. We'd go back to practice and practice till like four in the morning. And then, you know, and that's kind of the way we were since we were kids. You might've just right. revealed that to his parents. I yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we're all, He's going to get grounded now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm 45 years old. <laughs> so has, um, um, you know, I, I, I love the fact that we have a cover band um, here, here tonight, um, a successful cover band that's been around for a long period of time. So I'm going to ask you a couple of these questions, um, cause I have this conversation all the time with people. So has, has working with or playing in libido funk circus allowed you to be, I guess, financially dependent from having a day job or any other kind of part-time jobs. This is, this is your full-time job, your full-time gig. You're running libido funk circus. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's been with it. I've, also booked other bands and managed other bands. And over the years, as I've got on this experience and stuff, took on other bands and nurtured them and actually put bands together from scratch, which in itself was, you know, sometimes successful, sometimes not. But for the 90% of our, since I've been 25 years old, Libido Funk Circus has been, yeah, has been able to create being in this band. We've been able to create a financial good living for everybody involved, which so, you know, I'm very happy. I'm feel blessed basically. Right. Just right. blessed. I mean, it's just, yeah, there's some of us who, choose, you know, a couple, couple members, he have a, you know, a side thing here and there. Like sure. Jay has his own uh, communications company that he, he can set his own schedule and, you know, do stuff like that during the days. Um, but for me, him, uh, our bass player, Dan, uh, yeah, Dan, Dan, everything has been music. Yeah. yeah for our, it's our all, living. it's all pretty much libido has afforded us to, for, it, it, it is our living, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And right. it's, um, it, but it's a hustle. I mean, sure. Know, of it's course. A, right. It's like with any other job. Cause a lot of, you know, that's the big people are always like, Oh man, that must be, you know, it is and, so and much it's, work. <laughs> it's just as much work as any other oh, yeah. job that anyone else would do. If you want to do it like other people, you know, if you want to make a living at it, it's right. not, you know, and that's sometimes hard for some people that they just think it's all fun and games because they see that 
because that's what our part of our job is, is to bring that. We're the people that are kind of helping facilitate everybody's good time. Right. So they assume that that's what a job that is, which it is. I'm not saying it isn't a great job. No, it's all the behind. It's all the it's all the behind yeah. the scenes stuff to you keep know. it. The right. wheels moving. The actual I mean? performance is 20 percent of the of the job. Exactly. Basically. Like, mm -hmm. was yeah. there ever a time or maybe there is right now, but um, was there ever a time where you had more than one version of libido like you had? You know, at any given night, there could be libido funk circus playing on the north side of Chicago. And then there could be libido funk circus playing at 115 Bourbon Street or right. anything uh, like that. No. And the reason is because it's been brought up to me at times, many times. Uh, the reason there wasn't was because when we heard of what libido funk circus was supposed to be and is, is kind of to have a personality that can't be replicated. And it morphs and changes when there's member changes. It's like an organic living orgasm that way. You know what I mean? But it, I didn't want it to be a situation where it's nameless and faceless people up there. So it's just a name and there could be 10 versions of it. And it doesn't matter who's there. You know, there's a certain vibe and we try to play the arrangements in the music like they're our songs the most we can without getting away too much from an original to where people are like, I don't like that or know what this is, but we try to inject as much of our own personality into it, you know, as we can sort of, right. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. We so haven't, it hasn't been the, you know, let's clone ourselves and, yeah. and make more money and do this and do that because it's not kind of how we developed just, yeah. it. I mean, everything that he said, plus, I mean, I think we, we sort of pride ourselves on, on the tightness of the band, you know what I mean? And you lose quality control when you're not there on the premises. And you know what I mean? Like right. you could put a, you could put a good, a good band together, but I guess it's just, we, we prefer to be a unit, you know what I mean? And, and, and that, that be the band, like, you know, who you're getting, you know, who the people are. It's not like you go, you show up and, and it could be any, any player or, right. Nice. any sort of stable of players, you know, which is fine. That's nothing wrong. That's how you choose to do it, but that's not how we choose to we do it. We try to, it's weird to say it, but uh, and we're not a jam band, but we try to have that or like a lot of nights, like our set list is constantly live. It's what I, what's written on a piece of paper and what we play isn't what happens, right? It's all in the moment, you know, songs can be, you know, it's constantly changing. We, we try to have a we try to have our repertoire is probably 12 to 14 hours that we can. So it's constantly, you can see three nights in a row and it's completely different. You know, I try right. to, cause I just kind of always came from that school of like, I like those kinds of bands, you know, where it wasn't the same thing every night. There's certain things that we have to do every night or little bits and creative things that we've put in our show. You know, but otherwise than that, there's kind of like the spontaneity, but it's because we're all so used to each other that we can do that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And you have to, you know, the best bands are the bands that play off of the crowd. Other, you know, we, we, we I, you know, we call our list a suggestion list. It's mm -hmm. not a set list. This is mm -hmm. just a, a roadmap. To, right, exactly. To, to get us to where we need to go. Yeah, and you if have you to be able to change, see a vibe right? is happening, you know, people are digging this style of music tonight and you have tons of it and that's not what you would on your set list. Why not go that way and go with them and see what happens through right. that's yeah, kind him, of what we do. Him and I go, we try and make, map out our set list for the, for the night. Usually it's usually pretty last minute right before we're about to leave the house, but <laughs> um, you know, we'll, we'll put something together. He's like, babe, don't, you know, don't take so much time on it. You know, I'm just going to change it anyway, depending on what the people are feeling. <laughs> right. Right. You know, cause I'll stress over it and like, well, no, that doesn't make sense there. You know, right. he's like, babe, just, you know, you know, it's just a roadmap. Just let's just, you know. you know, we should, and this is a good place for us to kind of stop maybe and back up a, a, a little bit. Cause I know he, who you guys are. I'll tell you a, a little bit more about that later because about 20 years ago, I was in a band and, a, and we actually opened up for you one time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I guess, uh, where was I going with this? I have no clue. I, I had a total flashback there for, I had a total track. flashback there for a second about who we are. I it's think probably, I, there you go. There you go. I want to know what Thank you. I hope your Thank you. I think it's <laughs> the Vicodin's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> kicking in. I think that the Vicodin is definitely yes. uh, kicking yes. in yes. because as he said that, and I said, yes, that's where I was going to go with that. I forgot it again. <laughs> <laughs> about who we are. About don't, make me, don't make me laugh. That's actually killing. No. Yes. So I know who you you are. Um, but there's, we probably have a lot of listeners, uh, cause we do have listeners around the world actually that probably have no idea sure. who you guys are. Yeah. So why don't you give us your, your 30 second elevator pitch about libido funk circus and let everybody know who they're actually listening to. You can do that. Oh. <laughs> but you're doing so well. I don't think so. 
Um, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you said no, we're just, uh, we're just, we try to be like the ultimate party band, you know, yeah. for, uh, to just to facilitate, you know, a good feeling in a room, you know, and we're, we're a cover band from the Chicagoland area oh, that, yeah, that, that does, um, dance rock, dance and rock music from sixties to now. And we do, you know, we, we try and present it as, as a show. Um, we, we have three, uh, it's a six person band with three dedicated lead vocalists who don't play any instruments. So that's two females and one male, um, and three players. And it's just, a we try and just be the purveyors of the party of the good time. Um, we do everything from backyard parties to, you know, black tie galas. I mean, and everything in between. So clubs, fests, weddings, um, yeah. um, just all kinds of, all kinds of, uh, events. Um, yeah. And then we just kind of, uh, and going through it, you can hear how the band started, um, with, with it being just strictly a disco tribute band. Um, we've kind of gone back to the roots of that. And this year we created a, a separate entity, uh, for dis strictly disco. So we have libido funk circus, and then we now have the disco circus. Oh. Um, so it's sort of like what we call our offshoot band, mm -hmm. um, which is, we wanted a separate entity so it was identifiable. Um, All the same players? And same players and more. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's an augmented band. So okay. it has more players than Libido Funk Circus has. And uh, it's debuting actually next week. Mm -hmm. And we're uh, in uh, Bourbon Street. Uh, oh, nice. Next Wednesday, the 22nd. Yeah. And then we're doing... Um, Rock House on the March. So we got Bourbon Street, March 22nd. Um, that's a free show. And then we have March 24th at Rock House in West Dundee. Okay. And then the one after that is the Vixen April 1st. Yeah. on April 1st in McHenry. And that's a full, like, that's a put together show that's, that is a show in the fact that it's not really changing. It's like kind of like a choreographed, like a theater show that right. we put together to kind of just capture that vibe. And it is going back to what we started from, but then at the same time being very tooled after 20 something years of experience doing right. that really tooling in a show of, of just the best we can of like trying to deliver like a very authentic seventies feeling fun experience for yeah, people. Yeah. We have character know, names right. and you know, you know kind yeah, of wow. is it the same look, same, you guys dressing the same? Or? Not as that we do in libido. It, okay. I, and it'll be the way it's, it's more like how when libido first started for the first, probably I would say until around 1999, we were strictly like a disco band. Okay. And then, you know, things have, you know, fads change and things were, for us to stay viable, we had, we started adding in eighties. And well, that was, that, that was when I joined. Right. Seven and then years she in. joined. And then we decided we used to be all boys and that was a different vibe as a boys club as a totally different vibe. And over time when we became perfect, looking at it as a professional thing, we, and morphed, that's when we were like, you know, a female vocal also would add a lot and that we've, and then we, we brought in Desiree and that opened up, that just changed everything. Once we had the female vocal and broadened out. And, from, and believe it or not, back then, you didn't see male, female fronted bands like that often. No, it, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it never. wasn't like, so it was like, Oh, you have a male and a I mean, that just kind of just. It was either or most right. of the time, even right. though, right. you know, would think that's just, there would be a lot of that, yeah. but it, there wasn't on our scene at that time. So if people, yeah. when people see you in the disco circus, they'll kind of know it's you, but it's different. It's, it's, it's a little bit of the same and a little bit different. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I mean, we have, we have a horn player, we have a sax player in that band and we have a, a percussionist and they're, they're just, we're so excited about them because they're, they're, they're young and they're hungry and they've never really done like this type of a band before. Well, I don't think the, uh, Joel's ever been in, in a band yet. He's mostly just like a music teacher. Um, and so they're, they've got that young, young great energy. energy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that yeah. energy that whereas you, it's nice it's to so be great. fused with that. <laughs> because sometimes right. when you've been doing something for a long time and you get older, you don't have that same youthful. And when someone around you has it, it lights that back up a little bit right. and you know, it's fun and, and all these things and you get just inspired and yeah. they're very inspiring. Yeah. Right.
So I'm curious in libido funk circus, you said you, you've got six people, you've got three dedicated singers mm -hmm. and three players. What are the instruments? With it's only just guitar, guitar, bass, bass and drums. drums, guitar, bass and drums. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes it real simple. Yeah. So, so back to my story, I'm not even going to remember the name of this place, but there used to be a very promising uh, place on Route 30 in Plainfield, close to the Lewis Joliet Mall. And they completely leveled it and tore it down. And the property that it was on is now like an auto zone and like a little strip mall and stuff over there. But this place was great because there was an indoor swimming pool that you could rent out. Uh, there was a big bar area with a big vaulted ceiling and then they had a big outdoor patio and the place may have even been called something like the backyard or something like that, but there was a big fire pit in the middle of it. It was there for about three years and they had to close down because the local residents, I mean, there were literally houses within 50 yards of the property. They were complaining about the noise. So the two brothers that owned it had to close the place down. Well, about a year before the place closed down, I was in a band called Static and we were a, we were a hard rock band. I mean, we did stuff like Tool and Stone Temple Pilots awesome. and Metallica and stuff like that. And they hired us and we played from five to seven. And then Libido Funk Circus played from about eight to midnight. And we decided we're going to stick around and we're going to see what this band is all about. We had absolutely no idea <laughs> the kind of music that you played because here you guys come walking in to like this hard rock crowd. Mm -hmm. And Everybody in that place did an about face. It's like they turned their concert t-shirts inside out or, did, or do, do whatever the heck they felt they needed to do. And next thing you know, all these headbangers were jumping up and down, bopping the 1970s disco and 80s pop and all this stuff. And this had to have been, I want to say this was like 1999 or 2000 or, or sometime around. It had there. to be before me then. Yeah, honestly, I honestly, I can't remember, yeah. but, but we opened up for you guys and I actually got to see this transformation of this crowd. That was, that was pretty That's unique to hear <laughs> that point of view from somebody else, that kind of stuff is neat to hear when someone says that, Yeah, you know, yeah. That that's funny because you, because they would tell me stories of like, like before I was in the band when they were just doing the disco thing and they'd go to these like biker bars mm -hmm. and, you know, and they, they'd show up and we'd be freaking out yeah. so they would, that they were going to kill us and we'd be so intimidated. And then we would come out and we would, we would play the handful of rock songs or Tom Petty songs that we knew too, just because. And then later everybody would be like the biker guys or, or biker ladies would be like, you know, why didn't you just keep on playing the Bee Gees? And, yep. the and we, yep. you know, we were just, yep. cause you know, you can't judge a book by its cover of what <laughs> people are going to enjoy. You know, yeah, yeah. we were, we were the ones that were, we were all intimidated and scared. We were like, they're going to hate us. Yeah. No, you know? you know, my favorite places to play nowadays are like South on I-55 out in the area, like Streeter and Pontiac yeah. and places like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and gosh, we absolutely love playing there because for some reason, booking agents just automatically assume that because, okay, we're out in the middle of cornfields and that's literally where a lot of these places are. They just automatically assume, well, we're just going to send all of our country and Western, you know, bands and stuff out there. Cause that's what they want to hear. No, mm -mm. I can't tell you how many we've been hired to play barn weddings. Mm -hmm. We play like three country songs in the band that I'm in. They want to hear the Stevie wonder and the earth, wind and mm -hmm. fire in Chicago. And they want to hear that. We got a four piece horn section. They want to hear all that stuff. And some of the best gigs that we play are the people that don't get that music yeah, sent out their yeah, we, way we on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We used to play festivals in like Streeter, Flanagan, um, what's the other Pontiac. One? Pontiac. Yeah. Pontiac was a huge it. town yeah. for us like back in the day. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, we played some of those towns and we'd be like one of the only bands like that that would play those towns out there. And it was great though, because they didn't have the, it's not oversaturated like it is here. And those people love the same music as everybody else. And Absolutely. They, they so go off. Yeah. If for some reason they just, you know what I mean? Like they don't have the same sort sort of like they're just they don't, they're not inundated with it like here we have so much of it yeah i guess so but it's just, it's just some of the crowds you know even it's even different when you play a south side crowd versus a north side crowd sure. you know right. what i mean and mm -hmm. so and then then it's just completely different when you go to like you know i guess what you'd call you know central illinois or the boonie towns or whatever right and they their 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 vibe is just it's just all out you know that's yeah. right. it's fun it, it's great mm -hmm. I, that's we we love going to those places and have you guys ever played the clock tower and streeter not the clock tower, no. Oh, what a great time that is! It's 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 like the center of their oh, town. Oh yeah, no, we did. Uh, I mean, just, fest. yeah, yeah. we played it a few times. Yeah, Street and there's fest. they've yeah. got the two walls. Uh, uh -huh. You know, the two I don't know three or four story buildings, and they've got these things. The uh, murals painted on these two adjoining buildings that make you feel like you're in the center of like New York or something like well, maybe that. Maybe not that. And the the, the whole town of Streeter just comes out. Yeah. And what a fantastic time that is to yeah. you know to bring that kind of music out to the folks. They just absolutely love it. They get up and they dance and they party 
with us. It's just a great time out there. Oh, it really is. Yeah. It really is. We had a, we, there was a bar out there in, in Street that we played, what, 15 years ago, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe it had to more. be about that. Probably about um, that and we cultivated a really strong fan base out there just because of this one bar. And it was small. It wasn't, no. it wasn't. No stage. We would just set up in the in corner. The, Cause we, you know, it's not, doesn't worry. We don't discriminate if right. it's, you know, can be a great bar, can be a, a big stage or it can be a little in, it can be a great party either way. Right. So, right. But this was, yeah, we cultivated that fan base out there and then, and then we started playing in auto and we've, and we've been playing auto work for a, a very long time. Um, and, and like you said, though, you know, we were, we're really well known out there and, and those small town bars can lead to weddings and we've gotten so many weddings and so many corporate events and so many, you know what I mean? And because that's, they don't hear of as many bands or if you make an impact, you're the go-to band. You know right. what I mean? Right, right. Um, but yeah, no, this summer I just, we just booked a, um, there's a new place out there that opened, I think last year, they wanted us last year. Actually, it might, they might've been there a few years now, but Gitano's vault or something. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like a really cool place. So we're going to go back there this summer as sort of like a reunite, re right, reunion right. with our streeter <laughs> people and do an outdoor gig there in, in August. So that's uh, looking forward to that sort of like getting back to being actually in streeter. Right. You know? right. So, right. So who does your bookings? We do. You do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what we do during the day is that's right. the hustle of our day job. Right. Yeah. Super you know. fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. now are you guys, um, are you guys old school? Do you visit the venues in person and talk to people or do you occasionally, do you social media? um, occasionally we will, but a lot of it is, you know, check it out online and, you know, do some research, see what you can find, see if it's a place that would be good for us. Um, there's yeah, but occasionally for up and coming uh, musicians. Cause I mean, we've got a fantastic musician, uh, you know, group of musicians in this area here, a lot of young people trying to get their bands out there. Um, how are people responding to you? Are they responding more to emails? Are they responding more to phone calls? What's the, uh, How's that? How's that going for, for you? Booking? Are you asking? Or yeah, for, fan base. Uh, I'd, I'd say for booking. For, for, for booking. From the yeah. booking point of yeah, view. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to help out the the twenty one year olds that are trying to get you know, something off the ground. You know, I started doing this when I was eighteen. Like booking my, I've always been the person in the band that's booked it, and it's weird because since COVID mm -hmm. and or after COVID, it's the landscapes are really different. It seems like just with people, like it's hard to get a hold of people. In oh, every yeah. format, this it just seems this is like the new normal. It just seems to be where, yep. where and they, and people don't like to get back to you. So don't they, get discouraged because right, it happens to us all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's, no. No doubt yeah. about it. Even right. the people you do business with on a regular basis, it's like it seems like everybody is just we're just all like taking our time when it comes to you know getting taking back. Taking our time, or everybody is just swamped. It swamped. Feels yeah. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. What I mean? you know? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I and, and I don't know if people are swamped. I mean, you know, I have a day job where I've got to be in contact with people and build mm -hmm. relationships all the time. And people that I've known for 10 years, you know, won't pick up the phone, won't answer an email. It's, oh, it's across you know, the board. It's, the, not, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not just the music, yeah. right. It's not just the music business, you know, yeah. you know, COVID's had that effect on a lot of different things. Um, but you know yeah. what? I mean, I think it, and when you were saying, as far as like, you know, helping out the youngins, you know, as far as communication goes, honestly, like text and messenger on Facebook. Seem to be the way most people like to. Yeah. 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 Nobody likes to be on the phone. It doesn't seem Nobody like Nobody wants to pick up a phone. You know, right. right and right, the yeah. email thing is, has been hard. You know what I mean? So it's, I think it's easy for people to pick up their phone, look at their Facebook messages and just, you know, kind of like quickly respond or, you know, if you have their number, they'll, they'll text you real, real quick. Or so I, I think as far as that goes, that's, that's probably the route, you know, I've right. sent a lot of stuff out to, cause even us, you know, I mean, still it's, you know, for as long as we've been around, we get surprised by how many people still haven't heard of us. You know what I mean? And it's like, or new people take over positions and they, right. they don't know that the same scene as everybody else. And, right. you know, so it takes a while. They don't know who you are or whatever. Yeah. And it's in that, especially in the festival world and right. the, in corporate worlds or anything like that. Cause those, those people change quite a bit, you know? Right. You but know, I've had a little bit of luck recently with, with just going through Facebook, you know, right. or Instagram or. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I've had people tell me that, you know, um, you know, mainly people in their twenties and early thirties, they say, Oh, I don't use Facebook. That's, mm -hmm. that's the old person's yeah. you know, social yeah. media, but no, every gig I've booked this year has been through Facebook messenger. Yeah. And, and I think there's a tie in a correlation because a lot of bar owners nowadays are 30 32, you know, mm -hmm. they're in the early thirties, mm -hmm. right? The, yeah. These are people that are in the workforce now and they're managing bars. Mm -hmm. And if they're not on Facebook, where are they? They're on 
Twitter or, you know, whatever, Instagram, whatever else that they're on. But, you know, I failed to see how I can use those other formats as a successful way of booking the band. You know, how do you tell who I am by sending you a, a snapshot? You know, yeah. you know, a, a picture or something right. like that. But, right. Um, yeah. Interesting. A lot of them I'll find too, if they get that far with them and they don't know who you are, then most likely they'll be like sent. Then when they'll be like, send me some links to video and stuff, then, you know, then you're hopefully you're in or you're out at that point for like the youngsters. But I mean, and having good promotional ma- materials, Huge. your presentation from mm-hmm. the get go, because everything is presentation. If they don't know who you are, haven't experienced you. So if, like, especially for people starting out, I would say presentation, because yeah. you only got one shot at like your first impressions and everybody's attention span is very short now. Right. Oh yeah. You know? And, and it's like, got to be easily accessible. Well, mm-hmm. and the one thing he taught me too, I'm, 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 I might've been uh, a little bit of a procrastinator in my, in my previous life, <laughs> 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 but he, he's being married to him and stuff. He's taught me, look, if they respond to you, you got to get right back to them. If they're doing it now, they're doing it now. And you got to be That's Johnny on the spot. Right. Like when they're booking their calendars, you know, right. it's not, I'll wait for a week or two to hear from their book. They want to get it done. That's that's right now. A lot of the people that when they're dealing with it, they want to just deal with it. Right. Some people are. And then you get those people that they, they don't want to deal with it so much that they'll actually do their whole calendar for a year, which I don't think is the smartest business move. Right. But that's just because they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. And I get it because it's a, if that's not your, you know, I think sometimes of bar owners that are actually booked their rooms and stuff themselves. It's like that's probably the last thing they actually really want to be dealing with. Right. You know, with all the other things that they have to deal with as a bar owner. But, you know, and not to mention, you know, uh, you know, if we had to guess what's the average lifespan of a cover band nowadays you know you can book somebody in january and you're hoping that they're going to be there for you in may but they could have broken up in february (laughs) you know you never you never know (laughs) you know how did uh how did i get a hold of you messenger or email email the email yeah yeah we're pretty much glued to that you know every day so thanks even for the podcast is when i use messenger and email right right yeah so um anything else uh going on other than um other than Disco Circus, do you have any other bands you're managing right now as well? That we're managing right now? No, we kind of, no. that, that, that part of my life kind of burned me out okay. for, for that side of the business of managing right. other musicians. Um, it just wasn't a, a, a great experience for me. Um, yep. And I had, I, I might've had too many at once too, but I had, cause at one point I had like 10 different artists that I would groups that I was managing and actually managing all their personalities too. So it was, so I haven't done that in a long time. And we, I don't think we'll do that again. I don't think, <laughs> yeah, <we> do. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I like booking, stress. I like booking bands and getting work for bands, but actually helping manage them and stuff of that nature is like, yeah. And, you know, cause like I said, we put together a handful of bands ourselves or we handpicked musicians and, you know, and like other people have done and had success with, but for me, it didn't work out so well. Cause the musicians that I picked in the bands, they might've, they sounded great in there and that was going well, but nobody got along. Right. Yeah. You know, and that was like, that was part of it in the beginning that I didn't, and I should have with all my experience, but didn't think about how hard it was to take five yeah. strangers, musicians. Right. And put them in a situation well, like also that. Also, too, I think part of the fact was that some of them were just starting out. Yeah. So they weren't professional musicians already or, you know, already have haven't been in Experience. wedding bands for their, their whole lives or stuff like that. Right. So and it was like, oh, my God. Yeah, know? I was so, kind of doing like a rock and roll school with these guys way before, you know. <laughs> I mean, they've all gone on to have really successful careers. Yeah, a so lot it's of not, them. It, you know what I mean? But at the time, it was like, ooh, our heads were, were it was very stressful. <laughs> right, right. Right. You know, yeah, it'd be different if you had some somebody that was established and you bring somebody right. new on, you can mess right. with them. Get my whole thing, right. My whole thing was I was trying to like take musicians that had never really done it and kind of take care of everything for yeah, them. So yeah. all they had to do was be the right. artist and have fun mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of give them all this advice and it didn't work out so yeah. well. Just, you know, and I was like, okay. You know. Yeah. So no, the focus right now is, you know, obviously propelling the libido forward. You know, we have goals that we, we want to reach for that, um, band and project and different, um, I guess sort of caliber of gigs and stuff like that. Um, and then the, the disco circus getting that off the ground. Cause what we didn't, 
what we didn't realize is that having it be a separate entity, you still have to get the word out about it. You know what I mean? And people, it's causing a little bit of confusion. They're like, mm-hmm. at first when we put the announcement out, it was like, well, we're, what happened to libido? You don't have, is it libido? Is it just, now you're just going to do disco? And, you know, and it's like, no, 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 no. Like libido is still there. This is just going to take, a, you know, a couple of dates, you know, every quarter or whatnot, what right. you know what I mean? And, and well, we still have libido. So it's, it's also too with the, um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, with the Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> he slipped me one. You didn't see. <laughs> so how many shows do you play a year? Probably around 120, I would think, on a, on a, on a, on a, you know, on average. Right. And now you're going to add another 120 with the uh, <laughs> Disco Circus? Um, <laughs> I don't think I could handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but that, I think that's about our average, about a 120. I think, that, no, with the, I think the idea is, isn't to maybe add more, but just to, um, so that maybe we can work smarter in our older age a little bit, you know, and, and, uh, just to have, you know, like we're hoping that the disco circus is kind of something that's more of like a theater and big festival or corporate, you know, act and libido funk circus will continue to be our everyday, like workhorse, mm-hmm. you know, for everybody and see what happens. Like, I have no idea what will happen with the disco circus. It could be something that does a lot more dates than I'm expecting it to do, or it might not do as many as I'm expecting it to because you can never tell how, right. the, how the public is going to handle it. Mm-hmm. You know, even it being the same people doesn't mean that they're going to, you know, it's like. There's a lot to say for branding, I guess, right. you know, but. I think the time is right for the, something like that though. You know, like what? when we had the oldies from the fifties, we were listening to the seventies, mm-hmm. we were listening to mm-hmm. then, you know, then the eighties, we were listening to some sixties stuff. Well, I, was, know, yeah, I, think, I, was, I think the, uh, I can feel it in the audience with, when we're playing that material in, in LFC, I can, I could feel that it was, it, it was going across all age groups. Mm-hmm. Do you know yep. what I mean? Just right. like it did before. So it's getting this new life at the old people that grew up with it. And the people like my age, our age, and then above us, they all that's, they love that. But then there's, there is like, even my son who's 20, I get, they're in tune with that music again. So I feel like oh, yeah. it's time again that, you know, everything has that. Well, they hear, they hear it from mom and dad. That's what mom and dad are playing. So yeah. they hear it at home. Yeah. You know? yeah. I think it's time for another, like that's, this scene loves tributes. And I think, you know, that this scene could have another good disco tribute and have, you know, it's, it's about timing. Cause it's been a while since there's been a dedicated, just full blown show like that mm-hmm. from around here. You know, we haven't done that like this since probably 2001 or something like to the level that we're really trying to do it at. Right. Right. Or right. Maybe never at this level, really, to be honest, cause we're trying to really own it, you know? Right. So I've been, uh, I've been uh, really excited fascinated really to see the reaction of that type of music with the younger generation nowadays. Um, I've been playing more and more shows um, just a few weeks ago. The crowd was half 20 year olds and the band that I was in was up there, you know, playing stuff from the sixties and the seventies and a little bit of the eighties and the whole bit. And all those 22, 23, 24 year olds were rushing right up there in front of the stage and they knew the words to all of the songs, which was great, you know, because I think, I think, the younger generation, I think they're all getting tired of dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how long can you listen to that same beat over and over and over again? Right. Um, and they're just, they're tired of hearing music where it sounds too perfect, where it's, it's yep. missing the human performance, which is never, ever going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Or, and, or, or grunge. That sounds like. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. my, son, yeah. my son's tw- uh, 20, he'll be 21 in November. And he, 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 for the longest time, he was complaining about the music of today because it's just like he just he just didn't a lot of like that dirgy sort of rap stuff like that, like depressing kind of rap style that was going. And he was like, Mom, I can't. I don't know how my friends listen to this. Can't do it anymore. You know what I mean? And, and, and meanwhile, he's playing, you know, Tragedy by the Bee Gees downstairs when he's taking a shower. Oh, and wow. he loves Frank Sinatra. <laughs> and he, you know what I mean? He's, yeah. yeah, he's got a whole Frank Sinatra <laughs> thing going on. And I don't know where that came from, but OK, you know, hey, his yeah. music taste. And he can't stand like, I mean, granted, he is also a huge Kanye fan. Right. You know what I mean? So but he doesn't like metal at all. Like, no. Thing, like everything right. is hard. It, like I love metal. I mean, I grew up in metal, but, so it, but a lot it of the d- just 
I don't want to, I don't want to down it, but I don't love the rap music or hip hop stuff that, that I don't quite get. You know what I mean? He, he doesn't get either. Right. You know what right. I mean? And he was like, it's just, it's just such a downer. Like, why do they always want to listen to such depressing stuff? <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, that's I, what we were saying. See, I, I listen to all kinds of music. It just depends on my mood. Yeah, I mean, for it, sure. It, it, it's not always rock and roll. It could yeah. be, could be Frank Sinatra. I love Frank. But uh, last week, one day and I was driving along, I had a country station on. They were playing some good songs and, all of a sudden this like hip hop country song came on and, and I'm listening. I'm like, did I change the channel or something? It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> I, I, I mean, hip hop and country. Okay. But it makes sense that that's a place that it should go eventually. You know what I mean? Because of how country morphed into kind of country is kind of like just to me that modern country is very pop rock. Yeah. You know what I mean? With just a little bit of twang in it or, or the instrumentation just, it's, it could be rock very right. easily. Oh yeah. Easy. So it makes sense that they would. It's funny in. because there was a TV show that I was watching too, where, where I think it was Nelly did like a hip hop version of a country song. It was awesome. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, that was really cool. Mm. You know? And yeah. like, it was shocking to me that, and I was like, wow, that kind of makes sense. And it, yeah, weird shouldn't make sense kind of way. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it, a lot of things have gone that way. Like the, um, the past several years, the CMA awards, um, have all of the performances have been collaborations with a country artist or a rock artist or a country artist mm -hmm. and a rap artist, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I'm sitting over, over here going, well, why can't we just let the country music stand on its own? You know, and the same thing happened to rock music back in the 90s, where the guitar solo became an endangered species mm -hmm. because you had to have the guest rapper yeah. in, in place of the guitar solo. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's been going on for, for a long time. I, I think I'm kind of over that, you know, just like, um, man, you know, I, I used to listen to um, what is it on satellite radio um, coffee house covers. And I just got so tired of people taking fast tempoed rock and roll songs and turning him into some lover's lament, you know, <laughs> bullshit. Jeez, just, you know, rock that song out again. Right, right. <laughs> you know, why are we doing that stuff? Why can't we let the genres stand on their own? Yeah. But you know, we're, we're mixing it up. I, I think it's coming full circle again because, yeah. you know, like I said, my kids are young. My, my kids are, you know, 19 and soon to be 21 and they're listening to, you know, my, my son's learning how to play guitar now and he's learning how to play simple man. You know, yeah. they're, they're actually learning how to play guitar to rock and roll. Good. You know, well, that's, is great. that's the whole thing about <clears throat> like with the TV shows and the commercials and all that stuff and those TikTok things, it's letting all these young kids hear like, like how Metallica has this whole resurgence with like 12 year olds because of the stranger things. That's like, yeah. you know, we have our nephew is, is like, he's like 13 and he's all infatuated Metallica. But it's because of this and it's great. I mean, it's, it's cool to see that like people that young are into music that was like, you know, it's getting on 40 and 50 years old. These artists that right. have been around, you know, so I, but, but I, that that's they're how, finding new ways to reach those generations. Right. That's how they're yeah. getting it. It's yeah. not like the way we got music off the, I don't think it's the radio or, no. any, or videos. It's like the TikToks and the TV shows and the commercials, you know, which, and they start knowing that music. It's cool. I mean, right. Which all these artists, they keep selling those catalogs too. Mm -hmm. all their, all the classic artists are selling all their catalogs off. So I'm sure we're going to start seeing all the classic artists in yep. every commercial that you can, you know, think of, you know, they'll every commercial have a Bruce Springsteen song pretty soon. Sure. I mean, they, pay, you know, <laughs> got to make that money somehow. They well, they're, yeah. They're getting up there and they're, who do you leave it to? And maybe none right. of their family wants to have anything to do with that. So you yeah, well, take the money and run. Selling. Yeah. That's why they're selling their <laughs> publishing now. Like huh? didn't Bruce sell, sell like half his pub or all his publishing for half a billion dollars. Something like that, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just, that's amazing to me to think with all the money he's already made at this point in his life that all those songs he wrote, he half a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Right. You right. Know? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our, uh, our song guy posted something on, on Facebook a couple of weeks ago that said, uh, now that generation X is all old and everything's broken. Um, mm -hmm. REM should sell the rights to everybody hurts to like bear aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> or exactly. a million drug commercials. They or a million sell it drug it commercials. That's right. Because right. that's all you see is either insurance yeah, commercials. Yeah, that should be or, the, the one running, the one song running behind all the, all the prescriptions. That's right. Know, all the drug ads. Yeah, all the drug ads. Everybody hurts. That's right. We got whatever. And everybody hurts. So we've got something for you. <laughs> you know. So where's the best place for people to find you and see your, uh, and see your schedule of events? or your tour schedule as it, as it would be? You can always go to libidofunkcircus.com um, or, you know, it's it, inst at libidofunkcircus on Instagram or Facebook. 
and then you'll also be seeing from from our libido page we're also posting a lot about the disco circus to try and bring attention to that but they also do have their own um pages it, it would be at disco circus band on facebook and instagram or disco circus band.com and the websites are actually uh undergoing uh, a revamp so those will you'll see new websites pretty pretty soon, probably within the next month or so. I'm trying to get with the times and, you know, revamp everything and get our digital marketing in order and it's always changing the social stuff mm-hmm. and, and all that good stuff. But yeah, at libido funk circus or at disco circus band. Um, yeah. And the websites, but we try to make it pretty, pretty yeah, easy, pretty, pretty consistent, easy. you know, well, very good. good. Uh, thank you guys for coming out tonight on such a, it's actually a nice night. Yeah, it is it's a not nice bad. Night. It's a nice night. No snow, no rain, no nothing. Yeah. But uh, thanks a lot for coming out. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks. Well, how about that? Libido Funk Circus slash Disco Circus. Disco Circus. circus. <laughs> yeah. No, that yeah. was great. That was great. I absolutely loved that. Um, I love to have a seasoned cover band, you know, here where we can ask them the questions and help out other people that are trying to figure out how the to make this less, happen. The poor yeah. and less fortunate. And how to make the, how to make themselves more successful through the experience of those that uh, came beforehand. And yeah. uh, I think we learned a lot about who these folks are simply by having a simple conversation. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you've learned when and when not to take Vicodin. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before your podcast is not a, is, is not a good time to take Vicodin. That's right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was a great time. It was fun talking to them. Uh, make sure you guys get out there and check them out. They're going to be all over the place. 120 dates a year with another 120 dates of, of, of disco circus. You watch, you, you mark my words, 240 a year. It'll be hard to miss them. Yes, it will be. So until next week, thanks for listening. Uh, check us out next Tuesday when we come out with another new podcast. Now that we're doing video, I'm going to wave goodbye. Bye. Right. I don't know where I'm waving. Bye. <laughs> the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast is edited by Paul Martin. Theme song courtesy of MNR Rush. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music heard on the show. The music is used to promote the guests that are featured. Rock and Roll Chicago. Rock and Roll Chicago.